Um, something I was thinking about today, um, about maintaining no contact. Um, it's hard for a lot of reasons, and it's not just because of what they're going to throw at you and, uh, you know, like throw second cousins out at you, like, you know, the whole gamut trying to get to you. Not because of what they're doing, but because of who you are um, as a kind, caring, you know, individual, um, and they know that about you. Um, they know that you're fighting against yourself. Um, and that's what I've noticed with me. It's like you're fighting with yourself of like, would a kind person just cut off everybody? You know, that seems so cold, you know, you know, your mind starts to do that kind of trick on you, you know, that, that kind of stuff. And then you, you like, you, you fall into the, uh, ever presence stuff that, uh, and there's some truth to the ever presence. And what I mean by that is, um, when they take you to certain places on purpose, when they play certain music on purpose, when they wear a certain cologne on purpose, it's called ever present. So you think about them even after you leave them, you know what I'm saying? Like the after effect, like if, if you smell their cologne on somebody else, you'll think about them. That's ever present. If you hear that song that you guys listen to that uh, one time in a you know, in your car, you know, or, you know, a, an important memory, you know, you listen to that song later after you leave them, you know, it brings, it brings them up again. You know what I'm saying? Um, with me, it's more like religious stuff, you know, I, the repetition, repetition is really big with uh, ever presence and what they do, why they do uh, repetitious stuff. Um, and that's because like, uh, if I go near a church, I'll start to think about them. You know what I'm saying? If I go near uh, certain things, I start to think about them. So, like, uh, because, like, I was always I was always in those activities in that environment, you know, uh, that they put me in, you know, from a young age that creates this ever-presence. Oh, you went, you, you drove by this one church. You, it, it brings back a memory, you know. Like that kind of stuff. And that's the kind of thing that I fight against. Um, is that ever present stuff. I'm fighting against myself. You know. Um, but. Uh, that's the thing. Like there, there is a caring part of me. And that's the part I have to be careful of. Because that caring part of me could get me. Uh, could sabotage me and draw me back into their world. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, only a cold-hearted person would cut off his own family. Like, like that kind of thinking, that kind of, uh, and they know that you're like that, you know, like your loyalty to a corrupt family. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that you fight against. So that's my struggle, just like that. Fighting myself. Uh, is a big thing, is the biggest thing. It's like, so maintaining no contact is kind of like a discipline. You know, it's like a constant discipline. Uh, and I have to like adjust as I go. You know, and keep building up my boundaries and defenses as I keep going up further and further. You know. Um. So I don't, I don't, I'm not weak to the point where a Hoover would draw me in easily. You know what I'm saying? Like I could stand my ground against a Hoover, you know, out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Um, that kind of being solid, you know, but, um, and you, you know, like I, I realize I, I have to overcome like a lot of codependency stuff because I was, I was really codependent. And I admit that uh, they made me pretty codependent, but I don't think that was totally my fault. I think it was intentional on their end to make me codependent um, on purpose. So, um, 
thinking thinking that I can't make it on my own type of stuff, you know. Uh, anyways, but yeah, that's just the the thing I was thinking about today. Is just like it maintaining no contact is like a practice with your mind. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's hard to explain it, but like you're you're fighting like the ever present stuff that bring back memories. You're fighting, which is a, which is a big thing. Um, and you're fighting your own emotions as an empath, you know, as a caring individual. You have to not be a caring individual at all towards them. You know, you have to be uh, completely against your own nature with them, you know. But, and they know that's hard for you to do, you know. So, and that's how, that's what they rely on for you to come back. It's like that em empathic part of you. Um, uh, that thinks that you can fix them. You can fix the relationship. Uh but like um deep down you know there's no fixing them <laughs> from what you've seen uh throughout your life um yeah I, I i don't see them changing at all from from what i saw uh for, for a 30 year span at least uh being around them i don't see them changing anytime ever so, I don't even think Jesus could change them. Like, they would try to con Jesus. They would try to do that pretend show to Jesus. They really would try to trick Jesus into think into trying to make Jesus, uh, trying to trick Jesus to make them, to try to trick them to, to make them see, seem like a, a good person. You know what I'm saying? That's how, that's the level this will, this goes, is they, they would try to, trick Jesus into getting him to think that they're really good people and they're really Christian. You know, that's how deep this goes. That's the level of acting we're talking about, of consistency that I've been around. So it's crazy stuff. So anyways, it's crazy how long that acting can go, you know, to no end. It's just like a never ending acting. It's just crazy. Like, but they have to to get their fuel but like it's just crazy that it's just non-stop acting non-stop you know anyways that's enough about that but anyways but yeah it is and it, even i struggle for sure uh maintaining no contact because my mind uh my mind is still dealing with stuff you know whether it's codependency addiction chains invisible chains that's what it feels like it feels like invisible chains uh, so like i don't know basically the person i was around the most in my whole life you know that's what i'm struggling with is that one person i was around the most in my life so it, it has been a battle a struggle um just just me believing in myself to 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 last by myself with no no family supports at all you know has been a big uh undertaking of trying believing in myself like i've never believed in myself before you know like a whole nother level of believing in myself so that i can last without family you know um uh, without them like pointing the finger and laughing and saying, ah, I knew you couldn't laugh last without the family. So that kind of bullshit. But anyways, that's all I wanted to say for this video. It's just like, it is pretty hard. It's, it's hard as fuck. Um, implementing no contact wasn't that hard compared to like maintaining no contact, like continuously, you know what I'm saying? Like it really is like a discipline. You know, it really is like a constant discipline. Like you can't get too relaxed. You can't, you know what I'm saying? You can't, you have to be like, uh, always alert with your boundaries. You know, like it's a, it's a whole nother level of protecting yourself really, you know, that I'm not really used to until, you know, I've, I've, I've actually been forced to 
forced to be like this for my own protection to be uh, really protective of my boundaries and uh, my privacy, you know, like uh, nobody knows where I live, for, you know, as far as them goes, um, which is a big, which is a big deal. Um, anyways, so, but, so the, the whole gang stalking is not even a, a factor, you know, or the spying on me is not a factor. Um, so the hard part has just been me in my own discipline, you know, because that I, I know some people don't believe this, but I do care a little bit. They don't care at all. They're, they care zero. They care this much about you, but I care a little bit. And that little bit that cares could get me in trouble of uh, getting back in, you know, into their nightmare world. You know what I'm saying? Like one mistake of like, oh, I think you can change, you know, in my mind, tricking myself. Like they can change, but they can't. And I'm just back in, I'm back in the middle of their pretend show nightmare again. You know what I'm saying? All over again. So that's the main thing is that, that part of me that still cares. I have to be careful because, <laughs> because that part of me could be, uh, uh, used, used against me, um, uh, as far as me, uh, my own discipline, you know, to keep them cut off, you know, so anyways, it's a never, it's a, it's a never ending thing, you know, but you gotta do what you gotta do to survive, you know, um, survive another day, you know, um, I may not have made all the right decisions, but like I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of new at this kind of, you know, no contact, living by myself, full time, you know, uh, and believing that I can make it by myself, you know, full time. So that's a whole nother change for me. So, so I never believed in myself at all. You know, they broke me down pretty good. They broke me down pretty good. Um, not just behind closed doors, but which was a major part of breaking me down was behind closed doors, but like also in public, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, just being in their environment, you know, it's just, I felt like I was an easy target for everybody. You know, it was just like, I had like a bunch of targets on my back and in my front chest you know like I had targets all over me just easy target right here in the middle of this religion I'm an easy target you know hey I'm over here easy target you know shoot at me if you want to you know like I'm I'm free game you know that's how easy and naive I was you know of these people just picking me apart you know not just verbally but physically and you know emotionally and you know like I, I was I was I was a sitting duck you know I really was a sitting duck most of my life for these people um, for everybody I was a sitting duck you know and uh, when you're in the middle of their environment it's hard to see outside of it you know it's, it's hard to see hope outside of their environment it's really hard because they 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 do isolate you in an environment uh, where they control things, they make the rules, you know, so it's hard to see outside of that environment that there is a world outside of their fake world or their nightmare world. It's hard to see that when you're in their nightmare world. It's hard to see any hope outside their nightmare world. But, but I haven't, you know, it has been a struggle. Uh, the transition from their fake world to outside of it it's been a huge adjustment uh because they taught me no life skills none <laughs> uh they, they they didn't on purpose i know it was on purpose they didn't teach me any life skills how to be on my own uh how to make it work by myself 
you know, 24 seven, you know, I feel like I've been uh, learning it the hard way, you know, which isn't the worst way, but like, it's just like escape. Now learn how to live on your own, grow up, you know, I, all of a sudden, you know, you know, like that kind of a jump, you know, of like, there's no hope, you know, everybody's picking you apart. Everybody's making fun of you. God's not stopping them. So it's just like a free game, you know, for everybody to just do whatever they want. And I, I'm like, fuck, God's not stopping this. So it must be okay. It must be okay if God's not stopping what they're doing. And that's how I thought for a lot of my life. That's how I thought. So I'm like, must be okay. God's not doing anything. So whatever they're doing is okay, you know. So anyways. That's just been the subject on my mind lately. It's just that, uh, that, that discipline of your mind, you know, of maintaining no contact, despite all the memories, despite all the ever presence, despite all that, despite all your codependency, you know, overcoming all that stuff, uh, that they did to you, uh, psychologically. And then like, you know, still dealing with the ever present stuff, even after no contact, like, oh, I, I went there with them that one time. Oh, I went there with them that one time. Oh, I went on vacation with them that one time here. You know what I'm saying? That's ever presence, you know, and they do that on purpose. Like they, they'll take you to certain spots, certain vacation spots. So it, it makes a memory like a, like a solid memory imprinted on you, you know, like, oh, I went to this. I went, I went to Europe, you know, I went to this and that, you know, I went to South America, like that kind of stuff is just mainly to imprint that in your, in your memory as ever presence of like, oh, there was that good time, you know, uh, even after you leave, you know, you're still thinking about that stuff. So anyways, that is a big struggle is the ever presence. I, I will admit to that, the ever present stuff of like, oh, I did that with them there. Oh, I did that with them there. Oh, I did this with them there. You know, like all those memories, you know, coming back, um, uh, trying to mess with you, you know, to, to make you feel guilty for no contact, you know, that kind of stuff. So, and they depend on that. They do. They, they do that ever presence thing on purpose, the repetitious, you know, going here, going there to make those imprinted memories, uh, on your mind. So you're like, oh, I, I went, we went to this. We went to Disneyland, you know, oh, we had a great time at Disneyland. Oh, remember when we went to SeaWorld? You know, that kind of stuff. They do that on purpose. And that pisses me off. <laughs> um, anyways, that's all I wanted to say, I guess. But it is a real struggle. The, the, the ever-present stuff is a real struggle. Um, because you, you want to believe that person in their golden period type of acting. You want to believe that golden period type when they're in that golden period type of acting you want to believe that that's them that that golden period person but it's not them you know and that's the mind screw that's the cognitive dissonance you know that you and that's another thing you struggle with is that cognitive dissonance you know of two conflicting beliefs you know you know what they really are behind closed doors the nightmare and then you know the fake persona you know of the golden period person you know so it's like a constant battle in your mind, you know, the cognitive dissonance. So anyways, that's all I wanted to say really for this video. I guess I said enough for now. But, but yeah, maintaining no contact is tough. Uh, it's harder than implementing no contact. Uh, maintaining it is harder, I would say. And more important, for sure. So anyways. Because your, your mind will play tricks on you and your mind will make you um, uh, make you feel guilty, you know, and all that stuff, you know, the whole gamut, you know, the empathy plays against you in, in the no contact <laughs> portion. So anyways, that's all I want to say.